Over the last few weeks, we have been making our way through a series on church systems. Last week, we covered the Sunday service and evangelism systems. Today, we will be looking at my personal favorite system and the one I probably have the most experience in, the assimilation and discipleship system. Welcome to the Hacka Podcast. My name is Greg Hackathorn. I want to apologize for my voice today. I'm getting over having lost it earlier in the week due to some sinuses. Uh, So do please bear with me. I wanted to get this out to you uh, this week because uh, we covered this on the blog and I wanted to make sure that we got it out in podcast form as well. Well, the lockdown in Sydney continues. It was extended by another week. It has been frustrating for many of us in Sydney, especially those who are involved in running churches, but I'm trying to look at it in a positive light and get the most out of this time stuck at home. Anyway, let's get into the subject today before I lose my voice. The assimilation and discipleship system is the process where we take people from their first visit to being fully developing members of our church. Some churches have a problem with their evangelism system. It is very hard for them to attract guests to their church, but many have an assimilation problem. They get guests that come to their church but struggle to assimilate. What does it mean to assimilate? The dictionary defines it in a number of ways, but these two definitions best apply to the type of assimilation that we are referring to. It says, To take into the mind and thoroughly understand, or to absorb into the cultural tradition of a population or group. When people are properly assimilated into our churches, they are able to thoroughly understand what we believe, and they have been absorbed into the culture of the church. That is the purpose of assimilation in biblical discipleship. Now before we dive too deep into this, and we can get very deep, I want to mention a subtle word choice that I believe makes a huge difference in the way that we treat people who visit our church for the first time. It is using the word guest instead of visitor. Why does it make a difference? Because when you use the word visitor, you're referring to a person who visits. But when you use guest, the inference is that this is someone we are expecting, someone we are going to serve. Think back to when you were expecting out-of-town guests, and this may have been a long time ago with uh, what's been going on with COVID the last uh, year and a half. But think back to when you were expecting guests. This is what uh, my wife and I would do, and, and if I'm being honest, it's more so what my wife would do. But we would prepare the guest room. We would get it ready. We would have the guest towels done and have everything set up, have the nice bedding on, get everything prepared. We would clear the schedule, make sure that uh, we're not doing anything else while our guests are here. We would ask what types of food do they like. And again, I'm saying we, but it's it's Steph doing all of this. She would ask what are the types of food that they would like so we can have them in the pantry. She would prepare a, a gift basket for them. And I know a lot of you are thinking about inviting yourself over to our house now that I'm going through this list. And then you would anticipate their arrival. You would be expecting them to come. Andy Stanley said it best when he said that the church is a family expecting guests. This is not someone who drops by the house for a visit, but this is someone that the family has been preparing for. We should love and care for our guests as we would love and care for ourselves. Thus, we are doing our best to follow the two greatest commands that Jesus highlighted. He said, love God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So if we are going to treat them like guests instead of visitors, we need to have a process in place for them. We need to be prepared for them, ready for them to come to our church. We need to have a process in place so they feel welcomed and loved before they ever even set foot in the building. Research tells us that a guest has decided how they feel about a church after seven minutes, 
which means they have made a decision about your church before your pastor has even had an opportunity to minister and likely before a song has even been sung. This is why we must value our first impressions teams. And I can picture Sister Marcella, the first impressions leader at the POS, amening me right now. They are the first person a guest meets that officially represents your church, besides the person who may have invited them. Studies have found that an initial dis- decision is made about who you are as a church when a guest first makes contact with a representative of the church. And contact is defined as within 9 to 12 feet of the greeter. Think about that. When they are within 9 to 12 feet of a representative of your church, a greeter, they are starting to make a decision about what your church is like. And if you think about it, you do the same. If you go to a hotel and you go into the lobby and you're wanting to check in to um, the hotel for the night, and the person whose responsibility it is to check you in, the maitre d', if they don't even make eye contact with you when you get to the lobby, you're going to get frustrated very, very quick. We need to make sure that our greeters are trained to best represent our church because that initial contact is when the assimilation system begins. Like I mentioned last week when talking about the Sunday service system, Try to look at your church through a guest's eyes. What are some things that they might value? You might be surprised, but parking and restrooms are pretty important to guests. Is it easy for a guest to navigate your church building? Are you clear with your communication throughout the service? Do we keep them in mind when we make our announcements or even altar calls? At the POS, we try to explain the things that members might take for granted. So for example, We explain what is taking place during the offering. Why do we give? And what is the giving going towards? And we can address that more in the giving system next week. When we dismiss our Sunday school in creche, which we do following um, the announcements, which is halfway through the worship service, when we dismiss the Sunday school in the creche, we inform the church what the age range is for each of those classes. Now, everyone in church knows that Sunday school is age 5 to 12, creche is age 2 to 4, but a guest doesn't know that. And so we take the time to tell the entire church the age range as well as where the classes are located. Before pastor starts his sermon, he will even mention that we traditionally have an altar call at the conclusion of the message, and then he'll explain what an altar call is. That's where people can respond to the word that was preached and receive prayer. Now that we are mindful of our guests, how do we ensure that we make a meaningful connection with them on their first visit? We noticed this issue for a number of years, that we would have plenty of guests at our church, but we weren't connecting with them in a meaningful way before they left. Now we address this issue by offering a gift to first-time guests as a way of thanking them for worshiping with us. Not only that, but we established a guest area in recent years, where they would receive their gift, along with some morning tea that we provide to the entire And leaders within our church would go out of their way to greet our guests in that area. Now, this exact system may not fit your church, but it's important that we make a meaningful connection with our guests. And who doesn't like a gift? It also communicates to your guests that you are a giving church. Within the process of greeting and connecting with our guests, we need to introduce some type of guest card. This is a simple card where you ask your guests for their basic contact details. Name, email, mobile number, mailing address. It is important that your guest fills out this card because without it, follow-up is very difficult. After the initial visit, we need to have a follow-up plan in place. This could include a text message, phone call, or email thanking them for their visit. We include on our guest card a a simple question about whether they desire to learn more about the Bible. And if they are interested, we have our discipleship leader contact them to organize a Bible study. One last thing we do in our initial follow-up of first-time guests is send them a handwritten card from one of our pastors thanking them for their visit. And within that card, we also include another small gift, which is 
uh, a voucher for a free coffee at a local coffee shop. Most of what we do in our guest follow-up system can be found in a book called Fusion by Nelson Searcy, and I will include a link uh, to the book in the show notes of this episode. Now, all of this is done to try and ensure that they come back. If they do, we can continue the assimilation process. So let's say that they return. Do we make their next step clear? We have struggled in this area at the POS, and we're trying our best to rectify it. We have plenty of next steps for our guests. We have New Life Journey, Bible Studies, Connect Groups. But the process has not been communicated as effectively as we would like over the years. We'll sometimes have people who have been coming to our church for well over a year that make their way into New Life Journey. That should have happened months before. We're trying to solve this by creating a Next Steps class and establishing a well-known growth track. In the class, people who are new to the POS are taught about our history, what we believe, and the plan we have for them to help them on their spiritual journey, and that plan is the growth track. By making the next step clear for people who are new to your church, the assimilation process can more easily take place. This is where they can get plugged into all the great discipleship classes and Bible studies that you already have prepared for them. They can join a group and make those all-important friendships that are necessary to keep them connected to the body of Christ. Did you know that someone needs to have seven meaningful connections within your church, or you may lose them even after they've been part of your church for five years? After five years of investing in them, and they're part of the church and part of the vision, if they're not connected to at least seven people, you still may lose them. This is why small groups are so important for assimilation, because it is within those groups that they will form friendships and bonds that exist outside the four walls of the church. It is within this process of assimilation that they begin to learn and absorb the culture of the church. Obviously, when it comes to discipleship, we need to have trained Bible study teachers who are able to effectively teach the Word of God. Most churches already have a new members type class where basic doctrine and Christian disciplines are taught. We call ours New Life Journey. I referenced it a bit earlier. Both of these are essential for the beginning stages of discipleship. So to recap, the reason this system is so important is because it includes so many different people working together to help assimilate guests. It should include the first impressions team. This is known in some churches as greeters, ushers, hospitality. The guest card and follow-up process, as well as discipleship. This is Bible studies, membership classes, small groups. Without the assimilation system, consistent growth is just not possible. And that's why it's so important. We need to make sure that we have a plan set in place for our guests that we value them, that we are good stewards of the guests that God has blessed us with, and we do our absolute best. We put in the maximum effort that we can to ensure that they become assimilated members of our church, ready to contribute and to grow in the kingdom of God. I hope this has been helpful to you if you've somehow made it through my voice and the issues that I'm having. If you have any questions or suggestions about the assimilation system or discipleship system, please do not hesitate to reach out to me on social media or by emailing me at contactus at hacka.org. Next week, we will be looking at the volunteer system and the giving system. Thank you for joining me today on the Hacka podcast. Like I said, I hope this has been a blessing to you and that you can use some of the things that we talked about here today in your local church to help you assimilate guests and make sure that they become part of the body of Christ. If you got something out of today's episode, please share it with a friend and encourage them to follow the podcast. We are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, as well as a number of other platforms, including YouTube. Just search The Hack of Podcast. Speaking of the different platforms, if you have the time to leave me 
a rating and review on the platform where you listen to the podcast. That would just be awesome. Thanks again for your time today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on the Hacker Podcast.